Howdy friends, welcome back to the House of Tone. My name is Wes Lee. I started a YouTube channel to show what my life is like as a band instrument repair technician. I appreciate you coming around. Today's video is a comment driven video. I've been asked a lot about soldering. Soldering is just more than one thing. It's kind of an umbrella of items. So let's talk about some stuff. Soldering can be broken down into two basic types. There's soft soldering, which is the braces to the instrument, for example, or silver soldering or brazing, which is the way that braces are made. So a socket's brazed onto a flange and then it's soft soldered to the horn, okay? So we're gonna talk about that. And then within soft soldering, you've got low temperature silver soldering. So today we're gonna to discuss soft soldering, two types, 60-40 or 50-50 soft soldering and low temperature silver soldering. Let's go. So we wanna learn soldering. The first thing you do is you get an old beater. You find one at a flea market or something that the, your music shop is throwing away, trashing out, whatever. If you want to do dent work, this is the same instrument that you're practicing taking your dents out on. So we've got our instrument, we've got some things to solder, some pieces we can take off and put on, and we can do we can work on our soldering. There's three things about soldering: cleanliness, fit of the parts, control the heat. Only one of those things happens at the solder bench. The first thing is clean. To clean your parts, you're going to use some abrasive sandpaper, a variety of solder scrapers, perhaps even wire brushes. You want to clean any dirt and oxide off. Next is fit of the parts. You may have a pair of pliers to bend flanges and rods so that you can make proper fit. Some clips to hold the flanges to the horn, maybe a curved soldering burnisher so that you can lay things down and make them smooth and as tight fit as you can. Okay, now we get into the actual soldering part. First thing, more clean. You have to use flux. Flux builds up the heat oxide of when you fire a torch off on brass or silver. This is a 50-50 solder. This is a low temperature silver solder. They both use the same flux. 50-50 solder or 60-40 solder have a melting point of between four and 600 degrees. Low temperature silver solder has a melting point that is around 900 or 1000, give or take a little bit. 50-50 or 60-40 soft solder has a tensile strength of a few hundred pounds. Low temperature silver solder has a tensile strength of about 25,000 pounds. I'm speaking in general terms. Here we have a variety of torches. These are blazer torches. They all run off of butane, so they're refillable. I'll demonstrate them as we remove our braces. You see it's a very small pinpoint flame. So, maxed out, and we're trying to take our brace off, and you can see it's not going so well. It doesn't really put out enough heat to do this job. The flame is much broader. It affects about an area about the size of a quarter, so as well as heating up this brace it's also heating up the rest okay but it does do a good job for soft solder the large torch very large flame extends heats up a large area if we show that again down here it's very hot when i do a when I need a flame to affect a lar a need a flame to affect a large area, I use this. It moves very fast. Once we have our parts 
desoldered and have some braces to play with, we need to clean up all of this excess. And that's a process called heat and wipe. The heat and wipe process, you have one cloth dedicated for removing your solder. You fire your torch and you say to yourself, heat, wipe. So you move the torch in, heat, pull away, wipe. Okay, here we go. So we heat, wipe, heat, wipe. Go ahead and set yourself up for that because once it starts flowing, it'll go fast. Heat, wipe, heat, wipe, heat, wipe, heat, wipe, heat, wipe. Now, let's zoom in. You see how we've got this is down to tinning. It's what the residue that's left when you have all of the solder removed. And this is still, the solder is still here. So we continue. Heat, white, heat, white. You'll see it go to that pool, heat, white. And you know you're done when nothing turns. It doesn't, it's all smooth. It doesn't go to liquid. So there's no more solder there. Let's do this other joint down. Come in, heat. White, heat, white, heat, white, and it'll take a couple of times, and then it'll start moving. See, take it past that. Take it till it no longer goes shiny to a liquid, and no more heat than you have to use. So now we're ready to clean this joint up. So for that, we can take some of our sandpaper. And we can just come in and rough this up. We have to clean the brace off as well. So let's clean the solder off that. Heat and wipe. And just get that rhythm. Heat, wipe. Heat, wipe. Heat white and it'll once the solder starts to flow it goes fast let's get this one while we're here heat white heat now if the reason you want it to move fast is because with with these torches that put out such a wide, I can feel the flame there. It's a broad flame. And so it's going to get really hot really fast. And you don't want to burn the lacquer. If this were an instrument where the lacquer was important, you don't want to burn that lacquer. And that's why you want to, you want to get that rhythm, get in, get out. Because a torch, a flame torch will ignite the lacquer. So this time to clean and rough up our brace, I'm going to use the solder scraper. And I just want to make this good and shiny and rough it up a little bit. We're going to use a holding clamp. Actually, we're going to put on some flux. And then we're going to put on a, a clip. And that fit, you want to have a good fit on your part. You don't want any gaps. You want to have it nice and set in all the way around. So if you have to do dent work, then you do that first. Now you'll notice I've got you set at an angle where you can see. Typically, we want to try to use gravity, so I've got it on an angle, and it's coming down, and solder is going to run downhill. Now, you want to control your heat, and what does control the heat mean? Control the heat means you don't want to use any more heat than you have to to flow the solder and get a good wet joint. It also means that when you pull your flame away, that the solder stops flowing. So I like to come in 
and get that bubbling. And I can tell when it's ready to take my solder. Let's come over here and we'll do it from your perspective. And I can get it. I am heating equally the bell and the brace and getting my getting it to draw in the solder. I am not heating the solder. And what I want is when if I want to make a mess, I'm going to, I'm going to go ahead and make a mess on this on purpose. I'm just going to heat this up and see it just starts running out everywhere. You see that? We don't want that, right? That's that's a bad job, and you're going to have a lot. To, but you're going to make mistakes like this because learning to control the heat is a thing. What you want it to do, I'm going to come down to this spot, and I'm going to put some flux on here so that I can solder. I want it to boil off, and I want it to take the solder but when I pull away, it stops flowing. You see that? And let's say that I want to make that solder. I want it to come down here. So then I'm going to heat that. I'm heating the brass in front of it. Do you see it? And I'm drawing it. I'm drawing it to where the, my flame is. So I'm controlling that solder. You see? And that's what you want to do here. You have to neutralize your flux. And I use baking soda mixed in water. As an, it's an, flux is an acid and it has to be neutralized. Now this is the part where everybody be flipping out because you got to give it back to the customer. And No, now you have to go into cleanup mode. So we're going to start with heating and wiping the solder that I did here. Okay, let's zoom in. And we're going to heat and wipe. 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 And we're going to get rid of that and take it back down tinning. In another phase of cleanup, you would take some buffing compound and just by hand you can clean up around your solder joints and you buff off you buff off your tinning yes there are machines that can do this there are buffing wheels that you can put on a dremel there's a bunch of ways to do this but when you have your horn back down to tinning you can clean it up and do it by hand. That's how little solder is left on there. I know that there's I know there's still a shadow, but this is our demonstration. We don't want to spend 15 minutes buffing on a on a project. Okay? Now let's take care of the brace. I've taken that soldering clip off, right? That means there's nothing holding this brace on. If I flood it with heat, it's gonna fall off just like it did before. This is where the heat and wipe principle comes in. Heat, wipe. Heat, wipe. Heat, wipe. I want this to heat the solder itself, not the joint. Complete opposite of the way we were trying to get it to take the solder, right? To take the solder, we wanted to heat the joint and not the solder. To clean it up, we're heating the solder only and not the joint. Heat white heat white heat white that's it and now you have a nice clean line you would come in and do your buffing right around that no one ever knows let's do the joint up here on this joint we're going to do the same thing we've cleaned clip it in place now this time we're going to use the big torch and you can see this flame is really really fast 
it's really hot and it heats a large area so you have to move fast once again notice I am not heating the solder we had a little bit of run out here but the horn is hot here's hot it's hot ouch it's hot here so while this torch was fast it heated a very large area very quickly we're going to neutralize our flux and then we heat and wipe and when you're using, <laughs> when you're using this torch <laughs> ain't much to that heat and wipe <laughs> all right now i'm going to show you something that happened to i think it happened to everybody in repair school so we're going to go back to our example here i'm going to put some flux on and use my torch now i'm going to make some solder more than one time to more than one person this would happen we would take our rag wipe the flux off and then we come in and we start our heat and wipe and it's going well and solder starts running all over the horn and the more you wipe it the more it runs what happened you didn't neutralize your flux all of the way and so when you go back and you feel of it you can feel that oily flux on there so make sure that you neutralize so your one little spot of a joint ended up turning into a half inch of mess to clean up but that's okay so you always want to make sure that you neutralize your flux when in doubt douse it a second time so now that we've practiced some let's say that we've got this instrument where the lacquer is real nice and the brace is broken away here let me just zoom in see that brace is broken away here and so we've got to take care of this and we don't want to burn this lacquer up and have to get in a situation where we're spot lacquering and stuff like that this is where the smith little torch comes in this is a jeweler style torch and it runs on propane and oxygen has regulators for each and it's a very very pin spot flame we're going to open up our regulators and fire it off how small that flame is big difference procedure is exactly the same if we were to use that large torch here we would toast this lacquer we've cleaned our joint out we've put a little sandpaper underneath we add our flux and you can see how how pin spot this is and it's very very hot and notice that I'm drawing that solder I'm feeding it from one point and I'm just drawing it down to where I want it to go see that and I put it in until that joint is full and that's it now when I clean this up I'm not gonna have any burn lacquer and this instrument is nitrocellulose lacquer it is one of the most volatile of all the lacquers it is easy for it to go up in smoke turn black etc so there you go this is the result of that joint it's super clean and there's no cleanup work the smith torch the jeweler's torch is a an, a more expensive investment but it elevates your game when you're doing this kind of precision work okay so now that we've got our basics of soldering down and how to do it let's talk about low temperature silver soldering i typically use low temperature silver soldering when i'm working with silver the reason is when it's soldered at the factory 
it uses regular 50-50 or 60-40 solder and it turns gray. It's that grayish color. When you solder, let's zoom this in. When you solder this, touching it up, if you use that same style, then it's gray. And it doesn't look good on the horn. It looks dingy and dirty. There's nothing you can do about it. The way an instrument is made it is soft soldered together with basic solder and then it's buffed and silver plated, right? When we do repair work, if we use a low temperature silver solder, we can make the repair look invisible because it's a white solder. This is going to be our demonstration piece. However, I've got to take care of some serious dent work and bell work on this so that's going to be another video be on the lookout for that and i'll see you back here when i'm ready to do this i've got my parts cleaned i've got my parts fit now i just got to control the heat and i'm just going to use this piece that i cut off the roll and i'm going to start down here and i want to make sure to get the bottom side Want to heat that up really good. And what I'll probably do here is just tack this. So remember, same as the other kind of soldering. And that's it. When this happens, when your solder goes to the one section more than the other section, your solder from there on will have a tendency to want to jump up there. Move your location. So start your joint somewhere else. And sometimes that will pull this solder back where you want it to go. Now this is a happy little mistake because what I'm going to show you is the other reason that I use this when I say it blends in so well. So we have an obvious mistake, a blob. So let me finish soldering this. Now I'm going to come back and do this joint. Now we're going to neutralize the flux. Same procedure, heat and wipe, heat, wipe, heat, wipe. Tighten up my flame a little bit. Heat, wipe. So I've got these. Now I'm going to go after this one that was our big, big mistake. I mean, we have a, I really made a bad, that was a, that was a bad shot. Make sure we have no cleanup to do on the other side. No. So after the heat and wipe, we've got this heat varnish that's built up, and I've taken this down to tinning. Now, when I polish this, that will be gone. That's when it's soldered back together. It looks like the silver plating was there. So here's a, this is an original joint. Over the years, this is the joint that we just did. It blends in and looks exactly the same. Notice there's no staining. And our spot, well, yeah, pretty much not even there. That's what we're looking for. The red rouge can, won't take off the silver plate and will blend that white silver right in. So I've got the repair done here. Now I've got to continue on with my bell repair, but this is the end of the video for you. That's been soldering. Well, all right, everybody. I hope that tutorial on soldering will help you out. Find you an old junker, 
Remember what you got to do. Clean, fit the parts, control the heat. You'll be golden. Takes time. Just do it 10,000 times. And you'll be on your way to a good start. <laughs> I've got to get back on the rest of that Metalophone repair. It's got to be done and two hairs past a freckle. As always, I'll put the part numbers of the items that I used down in the description and a link to Faree's tools so you can call them up and get some of these cool tools for yourself. All right, everybody. Thanks for stopping by the shop today. I really appreciate it. This is Wesley signing out.